Yeah. yeah. Like, what 14-year-old kid doesn't want what we have here? Like, find me one. Thank yeah. You. Hey, do you want all the things to make all the cool things for all the movies and TVs? That's it. Yeah, right here. <laughs> My name's Frank Ippolito. I own a company called Thingergy, and we make things. Most of our clients are film and TV, but we also do a lot of stuff for theme parks and the video game industry, trade shows and statues and stuff like that. It's no big secret right now, but there's a new game called Borderlands and we're building giant statues of characters from Borderlands. Last year we built a giant statue of the Fox football mascot, Cletus. We built a 14 foot tall robot. Well, I did a couple of shows for Netflix last year. One of them was Umbrella Academy, which I'm super proud of. We did season one and two of Orville. Like, I'm a big fan of sci-fi, so Orville's, like, super cool to do. Personally, I worked on uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens. I worked on um, the stop-motion chess set that was in the Millennium Falcon. So I got to work for Phil Tippett and recreate the chess set characters and, make, you know, make all of those. Um, so I did all the, like, molding and casting and painting on those guys, which was pretty neat. And, yeah, we just keep getting more and more cool clients and doing more and more big, crazy projects. So... Because a lot of our projects are super diverse, like nothing we ever do is the same. We kind of have a collection of a lot of tools. Uh, you know, everything from sewing machines to industrial sewing machines and you know, full body 3D scanners. We have a whole array of CNC's now. We have a big CNC router table. We have you know, handheld CNC stuff. And then we have things like our Tormach. Um, we have you know, manual lathes and mills, you know, whole mold shop and every kind of goo and rubber and plastic you can think of, pretty much anything that needs to be made, we try and keep all of the resources to make it in-house. Well, everything that we do is a prototype or it's a one-off. Like even if I have to make like 10 spacesuits, those are prototypes. Like if I, you know, on one of the episodes we did for the Orville, we had to make like 35 of these Kalon costumes, which are the, the Android character. And every single one, it was like figuring out some other little problems, like how the, how the heads go together right, and how they interface with the neck, and trying to make them better, and trying to make them more user-friendly on set, or, you know, how to put the lights in. Like, it's still prototyping. Like, we're not doing tens of thousands of things, or hundreds of things. It's like 20, 40, maybe 50? I don't know. You know, have, having the Tormach in here has been, like, so rad. We did a big, giant trophy project last year. We made, like, 400 trophies for a Red Bull event. And we had that thing running like kind of around the clock, whether it was making parts or just we were just feeding it parts to drill holes. Like sometimes it's easy stuff. Like I just need two holes. I got to be in the same spot on 500 pieces. Like that's an easy one for the Torrock. No job we ever do is the same. It's, it's not manufacturing in like a traditional like manufacturing sense. It's prototyping. It's, it's like you, you go to job shops and you get these one offs. That's what we are. We're a film industry job shop. Um, and whether it's, you know, props or costumes or statues or whatever, like we kind of have to also grow with the times. And that includes all of our little robot army, which is, you know, our CNCs and 3D printers and everything like that. And my, we're not just making Turner's cubes. We're, we're, we're making something weird that's probably not meant to be made easily. Sound bites! <laughs> <laughs> um, there's so much content being produced for all these streaming services right now. There's more work than we know what to do with. I'm constantly turning down projects now. Um, like we're we're booked up, I know for sure, for like the next 10 weeks, which is a lot for us. Um, there's a couple of shows that are about to start up, which will keep me busy till next year this time. Like it's a really amazing time to be able to put together a crew in a company like this and have all of the crazy toys to build all the crazy things. I had very little CNC experience before I got the Tormach. I'm not like a machinist by trade. I'm a machinist in the film industry, which is, you know, like a glorified hobbyist, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to explain that. I mean, we do stuff a lot stranger than actual machinists do. We just have to make things work. It was surprising to me how short the learning curve was to get in on the Tormach. I started to like recognize G-code and understand how it works. And I don't know it really well. Like I couldn't tell you what G54, that's, is that an offset? G54 an offset? Right, okay. I, I can't tell you what all the G codes mean, but I know how to look it up. And I know when I'm looking at the things, what, like, I know how to read it. So I go, that doesn't look right. That speed doesn't look, or if I need to like change the speed or just check something before I run it, like I know enough that I'm not scared of it. 
having this machine, it was super easy. I spent, I don't know, maybe a month like goofing around on it before I was just like, I got this. And now I'm teaching the people in the shop how to use it. it and it's easy. Like it's kind of dummy proof. And I was so surprised at how easy the conversational was on there. Like there's times where I'll just, when I did the big trophy job, I did it all through conversational. Like I didn't program anything. I just, once you know how to find your offsets and you're good, you know, it's, I don't know. It's pretty stinking easy. Having this machine and learning all of the like ins and outs of how this stuff works, I always come up with like these crazy ways of probably how it shouldn't work. Or, you know, like maybe that's not the right way to do it, but I'm, I wanna try it. Chances are I'll find somebody else doing it on YouTube. I saw somebody chucking material into the mill and just on the bed had had a, a turning tool. And that, that, that just blows my mind that people like figure out how to, you know, make those things happen. I want to get a CNC lathe in here now, you know? And we were talking about trying to hack hack that lathe into doing something that it's not meant to do. I'd eventually maybe like to get one of the, like a bigger machine, you know, something that's outside of this family. But this is like the perfect gateway drug. Like I'm hooked. It's not my experience. <laughs> <laughs>